Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be reading Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Now, Jesus heals on the Sabbath, and that at a Pharisee's house. Can you imagine it? Let's read about this. This is Luke chapter 14, verse 1. When he, that's Jesus, went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees on a Sabbath to eat bread, they were watching him. Now, I tell you, when you live for the Lord, when you live for God, when you do what's right according to, you know, the, the ways of God and the ways and the laws of the Lord, you're going to have people watching you, always watching you, trying to find something on you, you know, trying to find some dirt on you, trying to find something to accuse you of. Not a very pleasant thing to experience. Verse 2. Behold, a certain man who had dropsy was in front of him. Jesus answering spoke to the lawyers. Now, these lawyers are the, um, uh, the experts of the law of God. So these are like the Torah experts, okay? This is not like law of the land, so to speak, as you know, we have today in, in, in most nations. But uh, th this is the law of God. These are people who have so-called worked the law of God. These are lawyers and Pharisees. So Jesus answering, speaking to the lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Verse 4, But they were silent. Very important to note this. They were silent. Why were they silent? Because if you, if you do your studies, if you do some historical research, and even today in Jewish circles, they will tell you it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Even according to Jewish law, the Talmud, apart from the Bible, the Jewish law declares it's okay to do good on the Sabbath. Okay? This is why they were silent. See, a lot of people, uh, Christians in particular, they don't understand uh, the whole context of this. They think that Jesus was br basically just breaking the Sabbath or just going against the law of God. No, he wasn't. He wasn't going against the law of God, nor was he going against the law of the Jews. Okay? That's why they were silent. They had nothing on him. I mean, people accused him of that. But it was just a it was just a, a real frivolous accusation because it, 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 it held no water, because it wasn't serious at all. It wasn't a serious violation of any law, just in their own minds, of course, their own policy. They were trying to find something on, on Jesus. And this reminds me, you know, so many people today who are truly, truly following God, truly following the Lord, um, a lot of people accuse them of doing things which seem to be, you know, um, legitimate accusations that, the, that people have against these people. But if you look at the law of God, if you look at the real context and full interpretation and understanding of Scripture, it's not in violation of any law, especially the law of God. So verse 4, They were silent. He took him and healed him and let him go. He answered them, Which of you, if your son... Uh, the TR here says donkey instead of son. Uh, the TR would be the, uh, the manuscripts that uh, King James is based on. So if your son or ox, I mean donkey or ox or son or ox, you can say, fell into a well, wouldn't immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day. Okay. So let me just make it very clear here that in the, uh, in the, Many different manuscripts we got. There are different little variations. This is a variation that we that we see in some manuscripts. Some manuscripts would say son. Some would say donkey. I know there's a big difference between the two, and I'm, I'm sure some of you would be kind of smirking to yourself, thinking, "Well, you know, you know, some some sons of some people, you might call them donkeys." But uh, yeah, but the the whole idea is Jesus is trying to make it very clear here that even an animal, okay, even an ox, if it, if it fell into a well, wouldn't you immediately go and pull, pull it out on the Sabbath day? Of course you would. You'd have to. It would die. You know, it would cause them, if you just let it, let it stay there for another whole day, it would cause a big mess in the long run and uh, it wouldn't be good for anybody. 
Verse 6, they couldn't answer him regarding these things. Again, why couldn't they answer him? Because they knew that Jesus was correct. They knew that what Jesus said was true. He was, he was never uh, inclined to violate the law of God. In fact, the scriptures say that he is the word of God. The word of God and the law of God are the same thing. The law, the law of God, uh, especially the law that, uh, that uh, God gave to Moshe, Moses, is the word of God. And Jesus is the word of God in the flesh. So what does that mean? If word equals law and law equals word and Jesus is, is the word manifest in the flesh, therefore Jesus is the Torah manifest in the flesh. Therefore, he can never violate Torah in any way because he is Torah personified. Everything that, that Torah says is Jesus. Every, everything. There's nothing that the law of God uh, commands or says. There's no precept, no idea, no principle, no no anything, <laughs> no uh, instruction at all that is against Jesus because Jesus is the law of God personified and vice versa. Jesus can never do anything against the Torah because Jesus is what the Torah is all about. And you understand there's a lot of, uh, actually most, by far most, vast majority of churches today preach and teach a Jesus that's not compatible with God's law. It's just some kind of a hippie, you know, tree hugger or something like that. That is not the true Jesus that lived 2,000 years ago. That is not the true Yeshua HaMashiach. It's not, okay? It's not the true Jesus of the Bible. I challenge you, especially you guys who go to church, I challenge you to read the Bible in every step of the way, actually every breath of the way. Uh, you need to ask yourself a question. Is this what I see in the church? Is this what I see in the church? Does my church reflect this? Does the pastor really preach the words in red? Does the pastor really preach the word of God? Or does he tell some nice little self-help sermons or some nice little tickling of the ears up there, nice stories and you know, nice little religious things that he just brings out and talks about and everybody just likes the little message? Pitiful. Very pitiful. So, as you go your way, remember, Jesus never violated Torah. And there's a reason why when he brought out these, these things, when he brought out these points to, to the, uh, the Pharisees, the ruler of the Pharisee, um, they had nothing to answer him. They could have said, well, no, no, Jesus, that is wrong. It says in our law, da, 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 da. No, they didn't say nothing like that because it doesn't exist. Okay. So be blessed as you go. May God enlighten the eyes of your understanding and give you great insight, great revelation as you call upon him, seek his face, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That means do what's right in his sight. Find out what's right in his sight according to the scripture and do it. Seek it, do it, obey it, and all these things will be added unto you. May God bless you and show you great and mighty things.